Okay. So again, my name is Dave Beck. I'm the director for the School of Art, Art and Design at UW Stout. Really excited to have you all here today. Um, this is part of the first year orientation uh, and registration uh, experience. Essentially, what we are going to do today is spend about an hour with you. The first half an hour is going to be focused on kind of an overall uh, uh, overview of the School of Art and Design and what you can expect in your first uh, your first semester and beyond uh, at Stout when you become part of our community. Then we're going to break off into smaller groups um, for those that have questions specifically for their faculty in their area and their program directors. Um, we have multiple faculty on the call today who are going to introduce themselves and answer questions for you um, uh, today. Um, as you can see, hopefully you see the screen right now, we have six different areas of study. Uh, you're all pre-BFA students in probably one of these areas or perhaps just in more of a general pre-BFA area, which is fine too. Um, we're going to walk you through what that means today, as well as give you a little bit of a glimpse into if you are, let's say, a pre-BFA industrial design or entertainment design, what that's going to look like uh, for you this semester. Um, as I had mentioned before, if you do have questions at all, feel free to type them in the chat. Um, we've got uh, one of our awesome program staff that is on call right now that is going to be willing and happy to answer any questions that, that she can. Uh, which we'll get to in a second. So without further ado, let's dive into some introductions. Uh, like I had mentioned, I already said I'm Dave Beck. I'm the director for the School of Art and Design, also associate dean. Uh, now what we're going to do is in order, just go through and have these folks uh, uh, introduce themselves, pop into the call, uh, and then we'll hand it back to me. So maybe take it away, Andrew. Hi, everybody. My name is Andrew Williams. I am the program director for the BFA in Entertainment Design for the summer. Um, Kim Loken will be taking over starting in the fall, but I'll be remaining as program director for game design and development for, for the time being. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Alex D. Armand. I'm the program director for the BFA in graphic design and interactive media. So welcome. Hello, everyone. I'm Jennifer Astwood. I'm the program director for industrial design. Nice to meet you. Hello, I am Shelly Pekka, and I am the program director for interior design. And I'm Jeff Wheeler. I'm the program director for studio art um, through the summer. And then Tim Tozer will be taking over for me in the fall. Great. Thank you, everyone. So as you can see, we're all here. We're all excited to, to chat with all of you and answer any questions you might have uh, and talk a little bit more about what you we have in store for you in the fall and beyond. I should also note, you see that there's two minors that, that we offer within the School of Art and Design, a studio art minor that focuses a little bit more on artists. That's, of course, uh, specifically for our design students that are interested in maybe a little bit more art as well. And then we have an art history uh, minor for everybody. Uh, you'll be taking some art history anyway, but that's some, maybe some additional opportunities as well. Those are just two of uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of minors that you can find across campus and declare at any time. Uh, so keep that in mind. Not something you need to worry too much about in your first year, but do keep that in mind if you have a certain passion that, that you want to kind of complement whatever your pre-BFA and BFA might end up being. Uh, that's a great way to think about it. <clears throat> okay. So, you know, this, this year has been crazy, right? We know this. It's been uh, one to... To remember, and you know, in certain uh, cases, probably one that we in certain areas wish we could forget. But uh, we are moving forward with it, uh, and we are creatives in art and design. <clears throat> Not only are we uh, open to embracing change, but oftentimes we we like to think that we're leaders in change, uh, and that that goes for this as well. Uh, what we want to tell you today is, as you probably saw with the news release from our chancellor on Friday. We will be back in the fall. We have every intent to be back uh, in person on campus in the fall. Is it going to be the same? No. Are we going to have 100% everybody online or in, in person? No. Um, it's going to be a mix. Uh, so we can promise you that we're going to have certain classes for all of you that will be in person because we believe very strongly in that experience. For example, our drawing class, uh, one of the most integral experiences as a first year in our School of Art and Design will be in person because we feel so strongly in that. Other classes, though, might be online. And we're doing that for, for your safety, for your family safety, for our faculty and staff safety, for the campus. Um, so keep that in mind. But no matter what, we're going to still make sure that we have the best possible experience for you. And we're working really hard all summer to do that. 
Um, and we've got your back. We're going to make sure that that is um, uh, there to support you. And of course, if you have questions about that too, you can reach out to us too. So today what we're going to do is talk a little bit about some of the classes you're going to take in your first semester. Uh, some of you probably have already enrolled in these, um, uh, maybe last week or maybe this week already. This week you've enrolled in these with the help of Heidi Gilbertson or others. Um, and some you might be enrolling in, in the future, which is fine. This is your typical fall semester that you're going to be taking. I had already mentioned drawing is going to be taught in person. Um, uh, you're also going to be taking a 2D design class that is going to be delivered online. Um, uh, the art history class is also going to be delivered online uh, that you'll all take. And then there's two other courses, one that will vary from pre-BFA to pre-BFA, uh, some online, some in person. And then uh, English, which is something that everybody across campus takes as well. A couple things to note here. When I say in person, I, it, it will still probably be some sort of unique uh, mixture of some online, some in person, again, to make sure that we're following all uh, CDC Unknown guidelines. participant is um, now joining. But then on top of that, uh, things like your art history class or your drawing or design class, the beauty of that is you're going to be mixed amongst lots of different pre-BFAs. So it's not going to be just uh, game design or just studio art uh, pre-BFAs, it's going to be everybody, which is a really great opportunity for you to get to know others as well and get to know the other majors. Of course, English 101, the composition class, will be from people across campus. That's a general education class uh, uh, that you take. Now what we'd like to do is take a little bit of time just to show you some samples of what you uh, can look forward to creating, the types of projects you'll be working on, um, and then later we'll talk a little bit more about materials and supplies as well. So I think uh, to begin with, I think we're starting maybe with Alex. You want to take it away? Sure. So um, hi, everybody. I'm going to talk about your drawing one class that you'll have in the fall, which is one of those core foundation studios that all pre-BFA students will take. Um, drawing at Stout is really uh, one of the foundational skills that we emphasize in our program. It's one of the things that makes our programs unique, regardless of what major you're choosing in art or design. Um, the approach and the way that we teach drawing is that it's observational, so that means drawing from life. So you'll spend a lot of time observing uh, still lifes in the classroom and translating them onto the page. Uh, we really try to emphasize drawing as a tool for exploration and experimentation, a way of seeing the world, a way of generating ideas. Um, so you're going to be pushed in your class to um, go a lot further probably than you have in any prior drawing class experiences that you've had. The approach is to really kind of take apart everything that you've done before and put it back together again um, in the studio. So it's a really amazing experience. We have incredibly talented um, drawing instructors, and it's also a chance for you to really um, try to find out what it means to be an art and design student at the undergraduate level. Um, it's a very rigorous experience. You'll get comfortable talking about your work and talking about the work of others and you'll uh, kind of get a real strong introduction to the studio culture at the School of Art and Design. Cool, great, thank you, Alex. Uh, I should note too that our classes meet for, uh, usually meet for a studio class would meet for about six hours a week, uh, while something like your English class or your art history class is gonna meet for a total of three hours a week. So that might be divided amongst two or three different days uh, and spread across that. Uh, so you're getting a lot of time to focus on your work uh, and, and also get to know your professors, which we believe very strongly in, too. Shall we? Hi, everyone. Um, 2D design is another one of those first semester uh, freshman classes that you will all be taking regardless of your major. Um, in 2D design, we teach you about the um, design principles and elements, which are very important. So um, depending upon uh, whichever major you have chosen, um, the design principles and elements or what you're going to be using for the rest of your lives, no matter what you're designing. Um, and this is about two dimensional design. So um, it's about composition and um, honing those uh, 2D design skills. Got a couple more. Oh, here. I'm sorry. And I forgot this last week, too. We also do uh, um, color theory in this class, too. I have to remember that for next week. <laughs> 
Thank you, Shelley. There's a good example well, of that right there. Yes, beautiful work. Um, okay, so we also have some major specific classes that we had talked about before. Some are online, some are in person. Uh, so we're going to go down the line here and get a chance to hear just a sneak peek about each of those different classes, starting with Dr. Williams. Andrew, you want to take it away? Sure. So for those of you who are entertainment design animation students, your major specific class would be Intro to Digital Narrative. This is about storyboarding, about figuring out the main beats of telling a narrative uh, and really translating those ideas into a way that's easily communicated. Game design students, you will also eventually be taking this, but just not your first semester. For game design students, you'll be taking GDD 100, which is Intro to Game Design. This is a very theory heavy based class where you're figuring out ideas of play, balance, game mechanics, and other things like that, and you're working together with computer science students. Um, for, for graphic design pre-BFA students, uh, you'll take a class called 2D Digital Imaging, which is an introduction to Adobe Creative Suite with an emphasis on InDesign, Illustrator, and Photoshop. This is a foundation class that all the BFA students will take eventually, but for graphic designers, You'll take it in your first semester to just give you those skills um, so that when you move into your spring, your second semester, you've already got those under your belt and you're ready to roll. For industrial design students, you'll be taking ETEC 110, which is materials manufacturing processes. So for industrial design, you're making things that need to be mass produced. So here you'll get familiar with all the materials and plastics and all the manufacturing processes that go with that. And for interior design, you'll be taking interior design communication tools, DES 114. Uh, we start with hand drafting. We move to AutoCAD. We move to Revit, which is the um, three dimensional software that is used industry wide now. And uh, we do a really fun group project where you get to um, design a historical room. And if you are a studio art major, um, you'll be taking an additional studio art class. Um, the three we have listed here are ceramics, art metals, and photo 130. Um, and that's because those classes have no prerequisites, um, whereas many of our studio art classes, painting, for example, um, you have to take drawing one and two before you take that. But these classes are open to freshmen, um, so you'll try to sign up for one of those. One, and if I thank you, everybody, those are those are great. One thing I should also add, some of you might start to be ready. Either you have registered or are ready in finding this or you will. Um, some of these classes might be full. You might go to register for something and find out, oh, wait a minute, I'm I'm a pre BFA in game design, but it's full. What do I do? Don't worry. We have other options. A good example of that is DES 220. That's something that everybody will need to take eventually, so that's a nice fallback. Other ones that are great would be something like a ceramics class or a metals class. So uh, there are other options. Um, uh, so be sure that you're connecting with your program director as well as Heidi Gilbertson, who will help you with advising uh, and registration if you haven't done that already. So just a side note there. Uh, and Andrew, back to you for art history. Yeah, so in addition to your studio-based classes, you'll also be taking the first of a two-semester sequence of art history classes that will cover uh, some of the essentials of the Western art tradition. Um, in the first semester, you'll be taking Survey of Art Ancient Through Medieval, and that covers about 40,000 years worth of art history. It focuses a lot on mythology, on uh, geography, on other things, religion, how those things have impacted and affected art and um, co covers many of the greats of the ancient world. Great, thanks, Andrew. Okay, one thing I just wanna point out very quickly, uh, some of you might have um, uh, AP scores or AP credits that you're hoping to bring into Stout. Couple things on that. One, if you have anything other than art and design, be sure you do um, uh, check with your advisor as you're registering to make sure that those, those are gonna be transferred. Um, I, I wanted to point out that art and design is going to look a little different. When you look online, it's not necessarily what it is going to be changed to. Um, we are changing it to basically allow a score of three or higher and reviewing your portfolio uh, to count towards an art studio selective. That does not mean it's going to count towards drawing, for instance, drawing one instead of that in the fall. 
but it will be some sort of other elective selective that you might be able to take in the future. So uh, if you are an AP student, please do uh, reach out to myself. You can do that uh, or your program director. Uh, but this is something that work, we're working on updating this summer. So you'll that's why I just don't want you to be confused if you were to find something um, contrary to that online. OK, so that was our fall semester. It's going to fly by. Uh, it's going to be uh, filled with lots and lots of um, busy work, but also lots of great creative time uh, and, and an opportunity to get to know a lot of really great people, uh, both faculty and staff, but also students uh, getting to know them as well. Now we're going to dive a little bit into the spring semester. Uh, and in the spring semester, um, uh, it's going to be basically building on a lot of what we already talked about. Um, and so we're going to cover that and show you some examples, just as, again, a sneak peek towards the future. Uh, and I think we're going to start with uh, Jennifer. Yes, yeah, so you'll be taking Art 200, Drawing 2 in the spring, and here you're building off a of Drawing 1. Um, you're drawing from still lifes, but now you're also incorporating color. You can move on. Dave? Yeah, did it move? No. Oh, again? Okay, and then you're also drawing from old masters and and playing with different parts of color theory, um, drawing from photographs, working with different mediums such as oil pastels, and then also investigating abstract art as well and drawing from your mind. Great, thanks Jennifer. My, I, my internet connection might be a little slow, so sorry if it's lagging behind for people. And then moving on to 3D with Jeff. So you'll be taking a class called 3D Design, which is in many ways an extension of the 2D Design class you take your first semester. We are focusing on the principles and elements of design, um, but how they relate to working three-dimensionally. Uh, this is the Cardboard Animal Project, which a lot of people do. Um, you'll be working both additively and subtractively. Um, so this is a plaster sculpture, um, working with sort of organic form. You'll also be working with wood. Um, one of the things that happens in the foundations classes is that you are trained to use our process lab, which is basically our wood shop. Um, and you go through a safety training program in 2D design and then continue it in 3D design. And then in 3D design, you actually use those tools to create at least one of your projects. Um, and fashion without fabric is sort of the big, uh, um, I don't know, extravaganza project in, in, in 3D design. Um, all of the sections do it at the same time. Um, and then there is a runway competition at the end um, that is open to uh, family and friends. It's sold out. There are awards and scholarships given. Um, it's a team project. And you are basically given a theme to work with. And you make a wearable piece um, that uh, uses any material except for fabric. Great, yeah. thanks, Jeff. It's a really fun project. Andrew? And also, you'll be taking along with your second semester studio classes, the second part of the arts history survey. This one going from the Renaissance through 20th century, it covers about 500 years of art history. Um, it's quite a bit more compressed in terms of time, but part of the reason for that is the rapid change that we see happening in art in the last 500 years in terms of what it is, what it does, and how people make it uh, requires quite a bit of depth to, to look at further. Great, thanks. So again, a nice sneak peek of that that spring semester. Seems like it's forever away, but it'll be here before you know it. One other thing I wanted to point out is the pre-BFA experience. This is not technically a class, but it's a it's a required uh, experience, I guess you could say, uh, as part of your fall semester at Stout as a pre-BFA student. Essentially, what will happen is we will get together every couple weeks, and that'll be myself as well as all of you, whether that's in person or virtually, we'll see how that all works out in the fall. Um, but essentially what we'll be doing is getting to know each other, but also most importantly, you getting to know not only the School of Art and Design better and the staff, but also uh, the uh, facilities and the opportunities, the different clubs you could join, um, uh, and also maybe uh, uh, hints and tips on how to best uh, apply for your spring portfolio review, which is when you would decide to apply for a, port, uh, for a BFA. 
Uh, I note I want you to note those six dates down. Those are those are the six important dates. We've already got those reserved, um, and I'd like you to reserve them from 5:45 p.m. to 10 p.m. I promise I will not hold you that whole time. We we're doing that in case we need to divide up into smaller groups to all meet in person. Um, uh, so please just hold those six dates and that time. They're all Tuesdays at 5:45, um, and then more details will come in the fall uh, as we get closer to that. Uh, and again, this is required for all pre-BFA students. Um, so please do be sure. And obviously we'll send some stuff out uh, later, but for now, it might be good to put it in your calendar. Okay, so another thing that we like to just cover now is materials and supplies. Um, many people always you know, ask us, oh wait, do I need to go out and buy this and this and this in preparation? And we like to say, no, please don't, because we have specific materials, specific supplies that we will want you to use in those classes. So let's use drawing as an example. There's there's lots, you know, I'd, I'd argue dozens of different brands and makes and even types of charcoal out there. We want very specific types and brands for you to have so that you can have the best quality and create the best quality uh, art and experience that you can. Um, uh, so we are going to give you that list when you arrive. Um, when you sign up, it's going to tell you, uh, if you already did, you probably saw this, when you sign up, it'll tell you how much you should expect to plan to um, uh, spend on supplies for that class. Uh, how you purchase them is up to you. Uh, we are going to try and make it as easy as possible. We have an awesome art and design supply store right downtown, as you can see, with the clock tower in the background. Mike's um, is run by an alum from the School of Art and Design, um, but also, uh, very importantly, we can essentially work with him to have kits. So you can just show up and say, I'm in such and such as drawing class, and then you will get a kit handed to you that's already pre-made and put together. So uh, keep that in mind as you're coming to the fall. Obviously, if, if there's certain common things that you'd like to get ahead of time um, uh, that, you know, wouldn't matter who's or what it is, just a sketchbook or that type of thing, of course, feel free to get that. But just don't be surprised if we do ask you to buy specific things when you get here. Um, a couple of things we listed there that you do want to consider. Um, there are some kits, as I just mentioned, that are already specific there. Uh, we also really want to encourage you to consider how you're going to be backing up your, your data. Um, as a stout student, uh, in addition to the laptop you're going to be provided, you will have a lot of cloud storage to store your your um, your projects and files online in the cloud. Uh, but if you're also someone that likes to have external hard drives or thumb drives, maybe think about that as well. Uh, so just co come in with a plan. Obviously, there's tons of resources to be educated on how that works at stout as well. Uh, but if you wanted other things as well, that we just like to put that. Speaking of technology, uh, you probably already have found out a little bit about this, but just to reinforce it, um, we're really excited about the fact that we have been for, for a very long time a laptop campus, which means all of us have the same laptop, uh, the same type of laptop, which means we also have access to the same software. Uh, so Alex earlier was talking about the introduction to the Adobe Suite in DES 220. Um, that's the beauty of it is that you'll be able to always access it. You will have the Adobe Suite free on your machine to be able to use uh, for those classes. Uh, if you're game, industrial, or interior design pre-BFA, you'll be having a, a PC and HP. Uh, if you're entertainment, graphic, or studio, uh, you'll be having a, a Mac. Um, and again, that's due to the fact that those majors and students, uh, usually it's something that reflects the industry in which it's being used. Uh, some software might still need to be uh, installed, but, but none of it would be anything that you'd have to pay for if it was required for a class. Uh, we also have some specific technology we like to talk about for entertainment game design. Andrew, do you want to talk about this? Sure. So if you are in entertainment or game design, there may be upper level courses that you take where a requirement is to have, uh, at the very least, a pen or a tablet display. Uh, sorry, uh, a drawing tablet. Uh, these are two examples for game and entertainment design students that we recommend. Now, the thing to understand is that these are not required day one. Um, the best bet is to wait until you get the supply sheet, but this is something that you would likely encounter um, either the end of your sophomore year or potentially during your junior year. So just things to keep in mind. Uh, there are two options that we have here. The two options that we are suggesting are suggested because they are the best and most compatible with our setups in the computer lab. Uh, the one is the basic Intuos S tablet, which is around $79. Um, that you can order directly from Wacom or on uh, on other 
uh, sites as well. Um, it's a really good tool. It'll it'll take you three or four years here at Stout. Um, otherwise, if you're looking for a little higher end tool that will last your time at Stout plus beyond several years, the Intuos Pro tablet is, is a really good investment to consider. One of the Chief benefits of it is the fact that it comes with the pen, the particular pen that works with our pen display Cintiqs in the computer labs. So that way you don't have to check one out and you can use the labs when they're available. Great, thanks Andrew. We always like to just briefly just remind you that we're gonna, there's gonna be some great opportunities to join different student clubs or student orgs as we call them um, at Stout. As you can see, there's different organizations associated with pretty much every uh, BFA, every pre-BFA uh, area. And it doesn't mean you have to be in that area. So let's say you're interested in both studio art and entertainment design. That's fine. You can join both of these. These are open clubs, open to all, um, and a great way to meet uh, not only fellow students in your major, but also upperclassmen and even uh, start to network with professionals. Some of these like uh, industrial design and graphic design and game design those are the um, the kind of premier uh, professional industry organizations as well. So you'll be getting to know how that that industry works from the from the get go with that. Lots more opportunities to join these and learn about them in the fall. So don't worry, but do keep in mind that's an exciting part uh, of our students' culture is those after hours clubs and meetings and activities too. And obviously, this is just for art and design. There's other clubs as I've I've noted below across campus dozens and dozens, just like the miners that you can join and participate in. Okay, so so with that, uh, now what we're going to do uh, is um, if there are any general questions that people feel would be uh, benefiting to all, right? So it's not specific to a, a certain major, um, then uh, this is a great wet time to be able to talk now. You could unmute yourself and ask it uh, or even type it in the in the chat. Otherwise, what we're going to do, and give me one second to pull this up, uh, we are going to create, we have, we have five different breakout rooms. Uh, they're essentially other meetings that you can click on. Um, and when you click on that, when you right click on it, you have to use your right mouse button to click on it. You can open it. That's going to take you to another meeting. So for instance, if you were to right click on the interior design one that I'm going to paste in a second, Shelly Pekka will be there as faculty and program director for interior design to answer questions there. They're going to be hanging out there for a bit to answer any questions you might have. Uh, and then I'm also going to, just going to be hanging out here as well. Um, uh, so with that, I'm going to uh, end the recording of the meeting now, but then I'm going to uh, feel free to, uh, again, like I said, um, uh, ask any questions you might have uh, in the chat. Okay.